Hey, okay, Jamie here, and I apologize for not having a video last week. I got wrapped up working on what it is that I'm going to be talking about in this week's video, and that is trip planning. So this is a question that I've gotten over on Instagram a lot since we became full-time RVers is how do you plan uh, your trips and how do you use your planner to manage your travel plans? So I'm actually going to make two separate videos that I'm going to release at the same time. One of them is going to be um, this one, which is going to be about how we put our travel plans together. And the second one is going to be what I put in my planner to manage so, it. First things first. We are still pretty new RVers, so our one year anniversary will be at the end of May. When we first started out last year, we had commitments that we had to hit. So part of the way that we traveled last year was my husband had speaking engagements, um, and then I had places that I needed to be to speak. We basically put our whole schedule over the top of the map to figure out where it was that we needed to be and when, and then we filled in the extra spaces there. Uh, this worked out pretty well. We hit all of our commitments, but the challenge was we were moving each week, which was really overwhelming for us. It was way more moving around um, than what we had originally planned. The upside is we got really good at hooking and unhooking the RV <laughs> and getting a system of things um, on how like kind of an order of operations of how to get things done. But the thing that we figured out very quickly is that we were moving around way more than what we originally wanted to. So this time, this season that we're headed back out, we have the opportunity to change that. Um, there are a few places that we need to be, but we don't have to be as many places as what we did last year. Um, so this year we took a different approach. We took the time to sit down and map out some things that we wanted to do, where it was that each of us wanted to be based on um, seasons and things that we knew were happening and in the places that we wanted to be. And we put our map together from there. RV life, there's a lot of people talking outside, so I don't know if you guys can hear that, but other people are having fun and not inside filming YouTube videos <laughs> like me. Uh, we've been parked at this RV park um, since October 20th, and so all of us are getting really antsy to be able to get on the road, and we're really excited about what it is that we've got planned for the summer. So anyway, with that being said, we've got a couple of different factors this season um, as we're headed out. One of those things is we got a new truck. So um, our old tow vehicle um, was a Chevy Silverado um, 1500 and now we're in a 3500. So it handles our trailer a lot better than what the old truck did and we believe it may cut down on some of the drive times. So previously when we were um, Previously, when we were doing our trip planning, we made it a goal to not have really long drive days. It's hard on our bodies. We all get really tired and it takes a day or two to recover from driving like that. So we have a goal of being at about four hours, no more than six if we need to, um, on a Google map. And so what that means is it takes a little bit longer um, for us to drive. So um, we try to keep our speed at about 65 because we want to be at a safe um, we want to be at safe like speeds as we're towing um, and not rush things. The other thing is we know we have to stop to get gas because when you're towing your house, you basically use gas up really quickly. So we don't know how long it's going to take us to get from point A to point B this season because we have the new truck. Previously, our rule of thumb was anything that was about four hours we would add at least an hour onto it if not two and so the day when we're packing up and leaving what our day usually looks like is that we are not early risers we get up around we get up and get going around nine o'clock um, so we're usually up earlier than that but as far as getting going and starting packing up and getting all of the steps from our checklist done of what we need to do to be ready to start towing that takes us about an hour to two hours to get done completely um, so when you start at nine that means that you're departing around 11 which is typically when you have to check out of an rv park um, but then when you get on the road if you have a four hour drive plus you have stops 
and then you go a little bit slower than what Google Maps expects you to um, because most speed limits are 75 that turns into six or eight hours and it really depends on how long you stop a place so some of the factors that can mess up your time are things like uh, stop like the number of times that you have to stop at a gas station the number of times that you have to stop to pee <laughs> so sometimes you just have to stop if you choose to stop somewhere and have a more formal like sit down meal like if a restaurant looks like it might be good or it has good reviews um, it takes obviously even longer if you decide to stop um, like this summer we stopped at the Battle of Little Bighorn for almost an hour and a half so obviously that was a longer drive day for us so um, there's a variety of things that can hang up your day uh, we also ran out of gas one time, which added like three hours to <laughs> the trip that we had planned for that day. So there's any number of things that can happen on travel days. And so we have to be a little bit more prepared for those. But with the new truck, we're not sure what the towing experience is going to be like. So the first leg of this uh, really long haul that we'll be doing is when we go from Tucson to San Diego. So after we leave Casa Grande here, we're going to go to Tucson and then we're going to go to San Diego from there. From Tucson to San Diego, it's about a six hour drive. And originally we had a goal of sticking to, if Google Maps says four hours, we're only going to drive that length. But we want to know how long it actually takes us. So we're going to see what that looks like. So that'll be a long drive day. I, I'm not sure if I'm going to share it. Um, we'll see. Uh, I'll be thinking of you guys regardless. But um, so we're going to forego going to Yuma and we're going to go right to San Diego from Tucson to see what it is that our truck can do on a longer haul day, what it feels like in there. So um, so right now we're kind of prepping for what it is that we need to do. Um, I'm going to show you kind of how we do some uh mapping that out and where we look at on Google Maps in case you're brand new um, to planning trips at all, like road trips, whether it's in your car or with an RV. Um, the other thing I'm going to show you is how I track this stuff in my planner. Um, I'm going to do the planner piece in a separate video um, because I have a lot of people that ask me questions on my Instagram account about how it is that I manage our trip plans. And so um, that's a little bit more in depth, obviously, because it's a physical planner. Um, I'm also using my Google Calendar to manage some of this stuff um, because the amount of detail that I need to log in my planner is just easier on a computer. So I'm switching to using my computer to manage some of those things uh, for us in the future. This is a breakdown of how we do our mapping on Google uh, that I'm going to jump in and show you now. All right. So here is how I trip plan. Um, with my husband. So uh, some of this may seem like common sense. I don't know that I'm necessarily doing, telling you all anything earth shattering, but because we've been practicing this and actively doing it, it may be valuable to you. So the first thing that I always start with is a Google map. So I start with where we are at and that is in, we're in Casa Grande, Arizona. I don't take the time to research where it is that I want to stay. I don't take the time to research the activities that I want to do. Um, I do that later. The first thing I start with is a map of where it is that I'm going to be. Um, the next place that I do is I map out my destinations. Um, so in this situation, we know we want to be in Casa Grande, Arizona. We know we're going to Tucson after that. Um, we want to go to San Diego, Palm Springs, California, Yosemite National Park. Uh, after that, we know we want to go to the Portland area, which is pretty broad, and then we want to be up to Tenino, Washington. Um, from there, we want to go to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, Yellowstone, and then Colorado Springs. So this is our plan between now and October. Um, obviously, you can see this is 56 hours of travel. You can see it's 3,466 miles. This is a lot of ground to cover for anyone. Um, this is a plan that we have over the next eight months. So we've got time to execute on this. We're not doing this all in one day. Now, last year when I planned our trip, we basically went from Arizona to New Mexico, Colorado, and over to Kansas City, down into Tennessee, Alabama, back up to Ohio, um, eastern or western Indiana, 
uh, Minneapolis and then across the Dakotas to Montana and back to Coeur d'Alene. And then we looped back around here. Um, the way that we did this before was we planned before we left the entire track all the way down to here and made all of our reservations. That held us over for about um, three months. My biggest concern was making sure we had a place to stay at 4th of July. And so I mapped everything from May until um, July. That worked out pretty okay. So it actually took us up to about here. <laughs> I knew where I wanted to stay and where I wanted to be. So we're kind of chilling um, this year and not being as intense. Uh, we did join this membership group called Thousand Trails. So that will dictate some of where we're going. Um, I can only book 60 days out on these sites. Um, so I only am going to focus on planning the next 60 days right now. So. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna eliminate all of these destinations that are beyond 60 days out. Um, so we're just gonna deal with the first leg of our trip and that's the first 60 days. And that is first we are leaving Casa Grande, Arizona and we are headed down to Tucson, Arizona. From Tucson, we will drive out to San Diego. And then from there, we will go to Palm Springs. I already know all the addresses to where we're going. I'm not going to plug those in for the time being. I'll show you in my next video when it comes to planning um, how it is that I plug all of those things in. But I did want to walk you through, if you're unfamiliar with Google Maps, here's a couple of things that have been helpful in me managing our trips. Not only can do you want to make sure that your destinations are plugged in in the order in which you want to go on them, um, sometimes I will screw things up and be like, oh gosh, that's a different route. Um, this obviously didn't change everything, but if I go and drop Tucson in between here, um, you can see how your hours change. So make sure that everything is in the right order um, as you're going through. Uh, if there's anything flubbing you up or like, I didn't realize it was going to take that long, just check this really quick to make sure it's right. The other thing that I ask for to avoid is tolls. Um, so if I ever come across a toll, I just want it to tell me and reroute me. Um, I, I actually prefer to not even know if we're coming up on a toll. I just don't want them to be there. So, so the nice thing here that you can check and the things that I pay attention to is for one, um, I check out about how many miles we're traveling. Um, so we can go about 350 miles um, in the vehicle that we're in before we have to stop to get gas. So obviously if we're only going 73 miles, it's gonna be no problem to make it to Tucson. But in San Diego, we're probably gonna to have to stop at a midway point. Uh, we did run out of gas when we were coming back down to Arizona last year. And so we're a lot more conscientious of where gas stations are. Um, I know this area enough to know that we'll probably end up filling up right here in Gila Bend, which you can't see, but I know it's there. Um, and then we'll probably, um, maybe just for comfort sake, fill up in Yuma too, because there's not any gas stations between Yuma and Gila Bend. Um, and then the gas stations are sparse, like they're hard to come by between Yuma and San Diego. Um, you can stop, there's like a Indian casino right around here that you can stop at. Um, but my husband used to like to play when he drove a sports car, the how far can I make it before I run out of gas? Because uh, he thought it was funny and it scares the bejesus out of me. So um, we'll probably stop in Casa Grande and in Yuma just to be safe and then um, probably uh, stop somewhere in here too to get gas just so I don't freak out. But it helps calm my nerves to know that we can go 407 miles um, and know that if we go to Yuma and we only stop there, that we're going to be fine getting to San Diego. Our last leg, San Diego to Palm Springs, is only two and a half hours. It's only 139 miles. So if we make sure that we're full of gas here, we can make it to Palm Springs without having to stop. So um, when my initial stages of planning, this is all I'm worried about. Um, from here is where I start figuring out where I need to book. So um, in the Thousand Trails website, I'm able to key in San Diego. It'll put me in the right region. From here, there's this park which is a little bit further out of town on the map. Um, it's in fact pretty far from where it is that we're wanting to be because we want to be not too far from San Diego proper. Um, so the Pico Pico campground and resort is where we chose. If you've never booked on a resort website before, or a um, RV website before, it's just like booking a hotel. So um, instead of picking the number of people that are staying uh, right off the bat, you start with what 
type of site you want. Uh, this particular resort does RV sites, cabin, and tents. So um, I'm going to click RV sites since we're obviously in an RV. I'm going to pick the check-in and check-out dates. I actually already have a reservation to this, so I'm not going to follow through this whole process. Um, the number of guests you can key in, the type of equipment you have. Like We have a travel trailer and it's 32 feet. Um, and then we have slide outs and then it can tell you what the rates are. Um, if you want to see a video in the future where I talk about how we pick parks, I'm more than happy to do that um, because I do look at a lot of reviews for that. But for the time being, you know, I'm not going to get into that in this video. Um, so once I've got the address, that's when I know I can dig in a little bit deeper and pinpoint where exactly it is that I'm going and how far it actually is. So these are the addresses for the two places that we're going to be in Tucson and in San Diego. And so you can see how big of a difference that made. So I was only at nine hours and 15 minutes, and now I'm at nine hours and 44 minutes. Um, it's reminding me down here um, that I have restricted usage and private roads, and then my destination is in a different time zone. Um, if I click on that, I can usually look down here and see what that is. I'm not overly concerned about it right now. I already opted out of being in tolls. Um, and then I know I'm going from Arizona and California. So obviously there's a time change uh, right now between now and then. It'll flip over. Um, so I won't have to worry about that as we get closer, but we're not quite there yet. So um, again, I know we're going to go 637 miles. I'm going to recheck our our mileage is good here, so I don't have anything to worry about, and now I know I'm good to go. Um, from here, I can do a couple of things with this map. So one of the things is I can send directions to my phone. The upside of that is I can refer back to this link in the future if I wanted to take a look at the route that we have planned. Um, the other option that I have is coming down here and sharing it. This will get me a link to this trip timeline. I typically will share this with my mom just so she has it and she can see exactly where it is that I'm going. If you want to get really crazy because you're really into Google, um, you can come in here and tag all of the locations that you're saying as your places. Um, and then just like it does with your home, they'll automatically pull up. Obviously, I use a planner and I'm going to be adding Google Calendar in here. That way I can share this information with my husband. Um, and so I'm going to include that um, in the upcoming video that I have after this. Um, the reason that I'm just hesitant to only go with Google Calendar is that I've run into issues where we don't have cell phone service in some of the places that we are staying. And so my fear and the reason that I still have a planner is I like to have a phone number, I like to have an address. Um, also, my husband likes to quiz me on what deposits we've made um, and what our costs are coming up. And so I just like to have a space for that in my planner. So anyway, uh, that's pretty much how we do trip planning. We don't overcomplicate it um, with too many systems. We just use Google. Um, I know that there's a lot of RV trips there and we just we're only in a 32 foot rig and so um, we don't have to go way out of our way to be able to get into spaces and this served us well last summer so we're going to stick to what is working for us um, if we have to come up with other plans then we will but um, for the time being my only concern is going through um, Yuma or going through um, San Diego and um, as we are doing planning a little bit closer to like once we're in San Diego a couple days from um, getting ready to leave that's when we'll really take a good look at this and decide like hey do we want to go up the 40 to the 79 back this way to avoid LA traffic and you know go this back way to get up to the Palm Desert or is this a better way and um, this is also another fun thing to talk to other fellow RVers about is like hey if we're going to Palm Springs what's the best way to get there um, because while this may be the shortest route according to Google Maps um, there may be a better route like going this way um, to go through there but we'll just see as we go we try not to be overly planner-y. Um, surprisingly, we do kind of like to see what the conditions are like when it gets closer, so. So I think it's a pretty simple system that we've come up with using Google to be able to guesstimate what our travel times look like and to be able to map what it, where it is that we're going. Um, like I said in the video, some of the things that we make sure is we like to know um, roughly how many miles we're going on any given day. We like to be able to track what it is that, um, 
we may want to do in that area or on the way there and then um, we go from there. So another question that I get asked a lot is how it is that I pick where we're going and the bottom line is is it depends. Um, so there's some places that we'd like to go just because they look like they're cool, there's attractions there that we'd like to see, um, but overall there's usually people that we want to see in certain areas um, or stuff that we want to see and so when we are researching where it is that we can go um, I take the time to jump on Pinterest and look at things um, I also do a little bit of googling like best things to do in California uh, best things to do in Palm Springs best things to do in San Diego and some of that can dictate um, where it is that we're going uh, the other thing is is that we bought a membership called thousand trails like I mentioned in uh, the video and so where those locations are is also going to start dictating where it is that we will end up. I'm excited about the path that we have built. I'm excited to see where it is that we, what adventures we can have while we're out on the road too. So, so I hope this was valuable for you planning your next trip, whether you're new to this or you got a tip or two um, that you can apply to plotting your summer vacations, your plans. Make sure that you click the button to subscribe so you can see future updates um, that I do as we're going through and actually doing all of these things. Um, and then also make sure that you stick around to watch the video on how I integrate all of my travel plans into my planner and my Google calendar. So, all right, until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.